Whether or not art moves the economy, art is something human beings have done as a species. And in fact, the greatest cities in Europe are remembered because of the art that they fostered. You go to Florence not to drink the water, not to admire technologies, you go there to observe the art. Art has value to us culturally, whether or not you're gonna assert that it drives an economic sector. Do you wanna live in a country where the people who empower you to feel the world around you, to feel each other, to reach for your inner emotions. Uh, I suppose, yeah, you can create a country without that. Yeah, but who would live there? Not I. <laughs> I am Neil deGrasse Tyson. I'm an astrophysicist. I think of myself as your personal astrophysicist. Uh, at my day job, I'm the director of the Hayden Planetarium in New York City. And right now, you can ask me anything in the art world as it may apply to my interests and my expertise. Bring it on. Uh, I would say, if I had to pick a planetary surface, why not Mars? I think the surface of Mars has a copper, well, it's, a, it's, a, it's rust colored, it's red, and so it has a kind of a reddish hue in the background. And I think there's a little bit of red in my skin, and so I thought maybe they would go nicely together. Uh, they would complement one another. But then I'd have to take breaths every now and then with oxygen, because you can't breathe the air, so. Uh, <laughs> We'd have to rig some apparatus, some breathing apparatus, you know, while I'm posing. Uh, but yeah, Mars, I'd say Mars. By the way, uh, on Venus, it's 900 degrees Fahrenheit, so I would vaporize. And <laughs> Mars, I, you can survive for a bit on Mars. So maybe that's influencing my, my answer here. It is true, Mars is red because of rusty iron. And that's why the Romans named it after their god of war, because in war you shed blood, and of course blood is red. I was noticed, uh, this has nothing to do with your question, but if our hemoglobin were based on copper instead of iron, then our blood would be green. Then we would have never named Mars after the god of war. We might have named Earth after the god of war for all its greenery. Just a thought. And then what color would they make stoplights? Hmm. That's for you to contemplate. Next question. Architecture has been through so many different forms over the years. I would say for no rational reason, more just emotional, I'm partial to minimalist expression. I'm partial to minimalist, arch modern architecture, I guess, where lines are clean and simple. And for no, again, no reason. If you ask, what are your reasons? No, I don't have reasons. Just maybe I need space to put my stuff. <laughs> and minimalist architecture maximizes like space to put your stuff. Uh, that could be it. Uh, I, I don't know. But uh, I would say beyond that, architecture where they have designed the space to be commensurate with the activity that occurs within it. And I don't care what you've done with that space, as long as it, it and the activity within it emanate from one another. So for me, when I think of the greatest work of art, I don't wanna limit myself to a frozen moment in time. I want to move it through time and thereby describe for you a scenario in the universe that I would just love to witness and it would just be extraordinary in every way. It would be, in keeping it home, it would be the formation of the moon. All evidence points to the fact that Earth was sideswiped 
by a Mars-sized planetesimal, a Mars-sized planet trying to form itself in the early solar system. And you get sideswiped, destroying the planetesimal, sweeping out outer layers of Earth's crust, creating a debris field that circums, that circles the Earth like the rings of Saturn. And that debris field begins to coalesce piece by piece and form what today we call the moon. Just think about it. To me, that's art. That is, you know what that is? That is a cosmic ballet choreographed by the forces of gravity. The laws of quantum physics are hardly ever touched in film. I mean, understandably, first they're really weird and they only really apply if you're a particle. <laughs> so what would happen is you'd occasionally disappear and then reappear somewhere else. Or you would sort of dissolve and become a wave, because you have the wave-particle duality. In quantum physics, you become a wave and you'd move somewhere as a wave and then reassemble as a particle. And the act of shining light on someone would make them disappear from that position and show up in another place. This is really freaky physics that actually goes on at the particle level. It would just be fun to sort of watch a world, quantum world. You have Jurassic Park, quantum world. I'm sorry, my first question is not gonna be, show me your art. <laughs> I apologize. I wanna know, have you solved the energy problem? Have you... Can you feed your population? I'm gonna start there, all right? Later on, when we're kicking back under the alien star, I'm gonna say, you know, what do you guys do with restless intellectual energy and creativity? Where does it go? Where does it land? Yeah, consider this. We have five traditional senses. Vision, hearing, touch, smell, taste, okay. Look at how much we've invested in our civilization serving those senses. We can see and so we buy beautiful art. We can taste so we, we create beautiful food. We create, we create um, delicious foods. We can feel so we pay for a massage. We can smell so we have you know, aromas that please us. Imagine aliens who had more than five senses. They would have things in their world serving those senses that would be completely oblivious to us because we don't have the sensory capacity to even receive them. If humans had no sense of hearing, we would have no music. So an alien with more senses, I would be intrigued what their artists are doing in the service of the senses that we do not have. I see it as the inverse of that. I see it not that the art is triggering interest in science, but that science has been tapped by artists, and for many of them has become their muse. And that is indication to me that science has become mainstream. Science is part of our culture. It's not just activity conducted by egghead intellectuals in ivory tower institutions. If an artist sees science as fair game, science is in our culture. Before artists really touched science with their creativity, I think people viewed science as something else, not anything that belongs to us all. I don't count myself among those who are active recreational drug users, so I can't comment on the relationship between an altered state of awareness and what an artist creates. Um, 
the little bit that I know of that, if you're in an altered state, you can think something is good that you just created, but it really isn't. <laughs> the altered state not only gives you access to possibly good things, it also alters what you think is good. And, and I don't know if one wins out over the other or whether they cancel out one another. I don't know. So for me, I, the least altered state of awareness I can achieve is the one I seek. Because that one is most likely to be closest to reality. I used to write a question and answer column while I was drinking a bottle of wine. And I was, I was thinking, you know, like Hemingway, you know, with his bottle of whatever he drank and, you know, the, the, the alcohol and the writer. This is like a, it's almost a trope, right? And I thought I wrote some awesome stuff. And then a few years later, I looked back at what I wrote then. I said, no, that's, that's not awesome. I thought it was awesome at the time. In the state of mind that I wrote it, I thought it was awesome. Later on, I was like, no, I write better than that, not drinking wine while I'm writing. I like art that's bigger than I am. So a wall, a poster, a, a mural, a, a interior architectural space. Uh, I just like having to turn my head in multiple angles to drink in what the artist has created for me. When I walk in, I want to feel like the artist had me in mind when they did it. I know it's selfish, but it's, if an artist is only communicating with the masses, that I think dilutes the impact it can have if in fact they made it for you. When the art spills off the canvas and becomes part of your living space, however temporary, I love it. I love it because it's a reminder that art, the vision of an artist is not contained in a medium, in a place, in a time, in a location. I think if you're truly creative, wherever you are, you can turn it into art. Einstein, as brilliant as they come, discovered relativity. And as smart as he was, there is no scientist who would say that if he weren't born, we would not have relativity with us. No, other people would have figured it out. It would have taken them longer and may have required more than just one person, but we would have arrived in exactly the same place. Very different for art. If Beethoven did not compose the Ninth Symphony, nobody who will ever be born will compose the Ninth Symphony. If Van Gogh didn't paint the Starry Night, nobody else is ever gonna paint the Starry Night. So, while there's surely some kinds of art rules out there that people follow, at the end of the day, the pure creativity of the mind of the artist is what lands on the canvas.